Coach Porter, uh, I want to start with you. Um, having grown up in Milwaukee, which statistically one of the most segregated cities in the country, you coached the Bucks for a few seasons, and we saw this summer how the Bucks' actions during the playoffs kind of sparked awareness throughout the sports world. How have you seen the landscape change in terms of players and coaches being able to speak their minds? And was was there any difference for you as a player compared to as a coach? Well, I, I think that today's players have done a much better job of being involved and using the platform for social injustice. I think uh, for whatever reason, during my time, you didn't have social media, you didn't have the ability to really reach out to a lot of your followers and just make it be known. And I think just you've had so many, not only just players, I think you've had organiza organizations and teams really champion the players' causes and really get behind the players. And that's been tremendous to see. And obviously Milwaukee, I think it was great that what the Milwaukee Bucks did. I thought that, uh, you know, for them to obviously recognize that their state was hurting and for them to really come together and be able to, again, try to use a major platform and, and try to bring awareness to what's going on. And more importantly, as we move forward, it's something that stays in the discussion and we continue to try to find solutions. Corey, being a white player in a predominantly white community, what do you feel your role is in the fight for racial equality? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a much different um, landscape here in Spokane. Uh, and that's really no secret to anybody who, you know, walks around Gonzaga's campus. Um, it's it's my job, I think, to um, you know, bring light to the situation in Spokane, um, do my best to be an ally to anybody I can, um, and be an advocate for, you know, my teammates who are part of a vast minority of, um, you know, non-white people at Gonzaga. So, uh, it's really important for me to be there, be their champion and be their ally and really uh, work hard and have, you know, my influence or use the influence that I have here, you know, like Coach Porter or um, like Coach Knighton uh, to really, you know, push change and, and make changes, you know, not only here in Spokane, but wherever, you know, my voice may reach. Coach Knighton, um, first of all, congratulations on being named the head coach uh, just a few short weeks ago. Um, you're obviously newer to the conference, but softball in general, has been historically more of a, a white sport. I know when, when you were a player, you were one of only a few black players that, that were on the field. And right now at USD, I believe you only have one black player on your roster. Is it challenging to talk about racial justice? Um, for me, no. I mean, it's uncomfortable, yes, but it's not a challenge for me. I can only speak from my experience and what I have, you know, been seeing in my eyes. I can't speak for every black person, but I can speak for me. But you know what? I, I'm going to talk and I'm going to use my voice and my platform the best of my ability because, you know, that's what I can do. And I can do other little things as well as donate, petition, vote, all those things. But, you know, I need to still bring light to the situation the best way that I can. And um, even that's a hard conversation. We all have to have them. And this is one of them. Coach Porter, how do you talk to your players about racial justice? Um, you know, first, uh, uh, I like to listen to their stories and, and see how it's affected them. If, uh, you know, uncle or somebody they know in their community. And then we, we talk through those situations. Um, again, my my father had to talk to me about how to conduct myself when I got pulled over in some type of random, you know, police stop or whatever it was. And I had to talk to my sons about it. So um, I think that it, it's there. Obviously, it's it's on the current news cycle every day. And so it's every day we talk about it. And the majority of my team is of people of color. And it's something that uh, is on their topic because when they call home, they talk to their parents and their parents obviously are worried they're far away from home, how are they doing? And so um, I think it's first to, to let them talk and, and get a feel for what they have to say and then try to talk through any answers or any things you can best share my own personal experience with to try to help them get through it. And Coach, you, you mentioned just kind of listening to the stories of students. Um, Corey, you have an opportunity with the NABC National Association of Basketball Coaches as a member of the uh, Player Development Coalition. Can you talk about how that group is helping to give a voice to uh, student athletes? Yeah, I mean, it's that's the, the main reason why we're getting together. And that's the main reason why it was formed was to um, give athletes across the country a collective voice. 
firsthand. I think that the the trend is starting to move in the right direction, kind of letting athletes advocate for themselves. And if that means make an impact in the community um, through you know through who you are and the platform that you have, you know we're all for that. And I think some really exciting things are, are going down um, in that committee. And a lot of the guys that are involved, everybody that's involved is, is really committed to seeing some tangible change very quickly. MJ, be, being the new softball coach at San Diego, the only black female head coach in the WCC at this point in, in any sport and the first female black head coach in San Diego history. Do you feel any pressure because of that? Um, do you feel like there is a spotlight on you and, and do you feel okay with that? I don't feel any pressure with it. I feel there's a sense of pride with it, a sense of respect. I don't feel any pressure with it. I don't. And you know, I'm still going to do my job. There's a, probably a little bit more spotlight on it and I'm okay with that, but that's not going to deter me from doing what I need to do by empowering these women um, and bringing more diversity into the softball program here. Um, you know, it's just a title to me because I, I'm going to hold it with the utmost respect and I'm going to do my job and do right by it.